The Game of Love and Chance, or Le Jeu de l'Amour et du Hazard, is a three-act comedy written by the 18th-century French dramatist and prose writer, Pierre Marivaux. First staged in 1730, the play turns on the classic plot device of false identities, when young Parisian Sylvia and Durante are matched for marriage by their wealthy fathers. They both swap places with their servants to vet one another unawares, as they've never met. Servants and masters alike then grapple with romantic sentiments that seemingly transcend social ranks, eliciting speculation that personal merit may prevail over one's class. At the upper class, Paris home of the Orgons, Sylvia and her maid, Lisette, discuss the marriage Sylvia's father has arranged between her and Durante, the son of his longtime friend. Lisette remarks that Durante is reputedly charming and handsome, but Sylvia has reservations. Recently, she has discovered that a certain man who appears amiable and polite when out in society, is cold and mirthless with his wife and servants. Suspecting that many upper-class men publicly mask their vain, arrogant natures, Sylvia fears Durante might, as well. She tells Lisette she values good character in a husband more than charm. Monsieur Orgon, Sylvia's father, notifies her that Durante will arrive shortly to meet her. As Sylvia's happiness is important to him, he will let her decide if Durante is a worthy match for her. Sylvia expresses her wish to determine if Durante is two-faced. She proposes that she and Lisette switch roles, allowing her to observe how he treats others, not just his betrothed. Monsieur Orgon quickly agrees to the ploy. While Sylvia and Lisette trade clothing, Monsieur Orgon tells Mario, Sylvia's brother, that according to a letter from Durante's father, Durante has hatched the same scheme as Sylvia. He will appear in the guise of a valet, Burginan, and his actual valet, Arlequin will pose as Durante. Orgon and Mario agree to keep the twin ruses a secret, allowing events to unfold as they will. When Sylvia and Durante meet, disguised as their servants, they feel an immediate attraction. This is a troubling development for both, as each believes the other is of inferior rank. Try as they might to feign lower class demeanors, they cannot conceal the sophistication of their minds and manners. Sylvia unwillingly admires Durante's intelligence, and Durante, surprised by her grace, wonders, what kind of maid are you with your princess-like air? Meanwhile, the false Sylvia and Durante, Lisette and Arlequin, are similarly intrigued and beguiled by one another. Arlequin, presenting himself as Durante, relishes his new, powerful position, displaying such exaggerated aristocratic airs that he comes off as a rude buffoon. Because Lisette, a maid, lacks taste and sensitivity, she fails to discern how vulgar Durante appears and is rather impressed by him. As she banters and flirts with the false Durante, Lisette also falls short of genuine upper-class refinement, but she fools Arlequin. Concerned that her mistress's fiancé is falling in love with her, Lisette warns Orgon that Sylvia should unmask her identity to Durante. As he knows that a Durante is actually Arlequin, Orgon gives Lisette his blessing to follow her heart. Lisette and Arlequin declare their love for each other. Both are eager to unite in marriage, partly because both mistakenly assume the marriage will elevate them to the upper class. Sylvia, witnessing the crude behavior of the man she believes to be Durante, is repulsed. Pulling Lisette aside, she presses Lisette to dismiss him, saying, You can clearly see that this man doesn't suit me at all. I hate him. Lisette declines, claiming Orgon wishes him to remain. Burginan, the true Durante, then draws Sylvia aside, and, although under the impression she is a maid, professes his love for her. While she reciprocates his feelings, Sylvia cannot bring herself to admit this to a man she thinks is a servant. Sylvia equivocates, saying she doesn't love him but doesn't hate him. The sudden appearance of Orgon and Mario interrupts the pair's intimate exchange. Speaking privately with his daughter, Orgon suggests she is losing her heart to Durante's valet, Burginan. Sylvia rejects this notion but is secretly in turmoil over the unexpected consequences of her disguise. She decides it is time to end the masquerade, but Orgon advises her to continue a while longer. Alone with Sylvia once again, Durante confesses that he is not Burginan, but Durante. While Sylvia is delighted and relieved to learn the servant is really the master, she chooses to maintain her charade as a maid. As she tells her father and brother after informing them of Burginan's real identity, she wants a battle between love and reason. If Durante's love for her is sufficiently strong, he will disregard her supposedly low rank and betray his fortune and his birth to marry her. 
to force Durante's hand, Sylvia enlists Mario to pretend he is Durante's rival for her affections. Mario confronts Durante, proclaiming he loves Elisette, regardless of her lowly birth. Jealous, but still torn between love and reason, Durante departs in despair. Love triumphs, however, and Durante soon returns to tell Lizette, there is no rank, birth, or fortune that does not disappear before a soul like yours. My heart and hand belong to you. She joyfully accepts his proposal, revealing she is truly Sylvia. Meanwhile, Arlequin reluctantly divulges his actual social condition to a Sylvia, whose initial anger quickly turns to laughter as she admits she is really Lizette, Sylvia's maid. Their mutual love and pledge to marry endures, despite the deception. The game of love and chance showcases Maravodic, a type of dialogue Marivo developed. Characterized by refined, witty wordplay, Maravodic appealed to French audiences of his time and is also integral to the continuing popularity of his works today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.